This video is gonna be on anxiety disorders. Now anxiety, worrying, these are normal experiences, things we feel when we're doing something important like taking the step. However, anxiety disorders are when you feel too anxious. Anx anxiety is out of proportion. So I write anxiety out of proportion And more importantly, this anxiety is persistent and it's affecting your life. And that's when it gets to be a problem. That's when we call it anxiety disorder. So you have anxiety out of proportion and it's affecting your life. That's not normal and that's why we call anxiety disorder. So there are a few things that fall under this category of anxiety disorders. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is going to be panic disorder. We're going to talk about phobias and we're going to talk about something called generalized anxiety disorders. Panic disorders we'll talk about first. Well, for panic disorders to fall under this category of anxiety disorders, it has to have anxiety out of proportion, it has to affect your life. So the anxiety that's out of proportion we call panic attacks. So panic disorders, these people have panic attacks. This is anxiety to the 10th degree. This is heart palpitations. You're feeling tremors. You're feeling short of breath. You're feeling chest pains. You're feeling like, you're feel, you're feeling like things are going out of whack. Everyone's staring at you and you, you just have to leave. You feel, some people experience it. They say like they're feeling like they're going to die. It's that strong. So these are all panic attacks. This is that anxiety out of proportion. So that's half of it. This is the other half, affecting your life. This, Panic attacks need to be followed by at least one month of them being worried of having another attack or concerned of having another attack or changing their behavior so they won't experience another attack. So I would say plus one month of, I'll write, uh, worrying about attack. You need both of them to make the diagnosis. Yeah, you need both of these, otherwise it's not an anxiety disorder. And it's very important because a common trick question to talk about someone that has a panic attack, and then after that, nothing. They're not worried about it, they just go on with their daily life. Is that an anxiety disorder? No, that's only meeting one part of the criteria. So make sure in the question stem where you're making a psychiatric diagnosis that it fits the diagnostic criteria. Psychiatric disorders are no different than other other disorders we talked about in our other blocks. So if a kid comes in and doesn't have conjunctivitis, rash, fever, you wouldn't diagnose them with Kawasaki's, would you? No, it doesn't fit the diagnostic criteria. So in the same vein, psychiatric disorders are no different. So you have to make sure they fit the criteria. I'm, just, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's these very, very common trick questions and they catch students left and right because students will just see attacks and then you know jump to panic disorders even though they're missing the second half of the criteria. One month of worrying. The fact that it's affecting your life. All right, something you should know, panic disorders usually don't have a clear trigger. Patient, patient will just walk into a room, a room they've been to a million times and then suddenly have a panic disorder. Or walk into a store or a movie theater that they've been to a million times and suddenly have a panic disorder. So no clear trigger. If it does have a clear trigger, then you're thinking something like a phobia. Phobias have a clear trigger. Now what characterizes phobias? Well, it's under anxiety disorder, so it must have anxiety out of proportion. These are people that, are, that fear that trigger out of proportion. So if you fear snakes, you, you don't even want to look at a picture of a snake, yeah? You don't even want to think about a snake. That's anxiety out of proportion and it's affecting their life. Uh, their friends all might be wanting to go for a hike. Say, hey, you want to come, on, come along? And they're like, well, there might be a chance, a slim chance there might be a snake there. I'm not going to go. It's affecting their life, yeah? It's limiting their activities, limiting their ability to enjoy their life. So all right, clear trigger. That's the anxiety out of proportion of a part and then affecting their life, limiting their activities. Those are your phobias. Now, last but not least, generalized anxiety disorder. What's in the name? Generalized anxiety. These patients are anxious about everything. Anxiety out of proportion. And I mean everything. And it's affecting their life. They, sometimes they can't sleep. Sometimes they're constantly up thinking about it. So this is a more chronic course, yeah? A lot of times these patients say they've been this way all their life. They've been anxious, anxious all their life. They say, oh, my friends always know I'm always anxious. They kind of joke about it. But this has a more chronic course. Usually over six months. 
very anxious all the time, affecting their life, GAD. Now, how do you treat all this? Well, all three of these um, share a proposed pathophys. Again, a lot of things in psych, we just don't know the specific mechanism, but share a proposed pathophys of increased things like norepi, which you can imagine cause a lot of autonomic symptoms, you know, palpitations, sweating, tremors, uh, chest tightness. So increase norepi, decrease things like GABA, which is our inhibitory neurotransmitter, so less, I guess, relaxation. And then decrease serotonin. The, the role of serotonin isn't as clear as these two, but decreased serotonin is seen in anxiety disorders. So how do you think we're gonna treat it? We're gonna treat it with things like well, first off, non-pharmaceutical things, you know, I always remember that, so therapy, CBD. And then once you go into pharmaceuticals, you're gonna to wanna to treat it with SSRIs to kind of raise serotonin levels. In acute settings, you might give them benzos. Benzos, again, potentiate GABA, so you kind of raise that up. And last but not least, this is for GAD only. So in GAD, you add buspirone. Buspirone is a direct serotonin Agonist. So we get our serotonin up. Okay, and something also you should know for buspirone, um, takes a while to work, first of all, a couple of weeks. However, it doesn't interact with alcohol. And that's important because a lot of these people with anxiety, they'll self-medicate with alcohol, and you don't want to give something that interacts with alcohol. So this does not interact with alcohol. So no reaction with alcohol. All right, that does it for anxiety disorders. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you remember my, my spiel about making sure psychiatric disorders fall into the diagnostic criteria before you make the diagnosis, okay? See you next time.